going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. We're finally getting some nice days out here now that spring is slowly rolling in. So hopefully I will be able to film outside a little bit more because everything that's fun here on the channel happens to be outdoors. That being said, today we're taking a look at a knife that is fairly new to me. It's been out for about a year now. And this test is going to be a little bit different today. This knife to me is a little bit too big to carry around as an EDC knife. It's a little bit too long, too heavy. And I'm not gonna be looking at the normal things like the blade shape and the handle material and things like that. But what I'm really gonna focus on is the locking mechanism on this thing because with the design of this lock, it could make a killer utility blade. So. We're really gonna be putting this thing to the test today. Without further ado, we're gonna be taking a look at the CRKT Seismic. To start off, let's get some of the normal specs out of the way. I said this knife is pretty big because, well, it is. It's a folder and the blade length on it is just under four inches and then once it's open, it has a total overall length of 9.4 inches. We'll do some comparisons in a little bit just to give you a better idea of how big this thing actually is. The blade steel is a 1.4116 or the 4116, which is a German steel. I really have little to no experience with it, but again, we're not really focusing on the materials today. It's got G10 handles, a relatively deep carry pocket clip, and you can open it with the thumb studs or the flipper on the back. Now for the main thing that I wanna focus on with this knife, that would be the locking mechanism, which CRKT calls the deadbolt system. The guy who designed this locking mechanism developed it over the course of five years. The way it works is it basically takes two bolts and interlocks them with the frame, the liner, and the base of the blade. There are multiple contact points, which makes this a much stronger lock than a conventional locking mechanism like a frame lock or a liner lock. And supposedly the design of this will increase reliability. Since most of the other locking mechanisms out on the market right now lock up on a diagonal surface, those locks can obviously slip and fail a lot easier when compared to this, which is a steel bolt on a completely straight surface. Now this will make a lot more sense if I show you guys the actual mechanism that is riding inside of here. So let's do a top down look at this knife and we'll also do some side by side comparisons of some other options out there. So here we are with the seismic, two ways to open, one with the thumb stud, and you can get an idea of how this locking mechanism works now. Simply press down on that button there, or you can open it with a flipper, which is actually pretty nice. It's a little slow compared to some others because this is a big chunky knife. However, you can actually adjust the detent right here with a little screw inside of the lock. You can tighten that thing up if you want it to have a little bit more retention, or you can have it set pretty loose so that it flips just like that. Pretty good action on this thing. Now for a better example, this is what the lock actually looks like on the inside. So holding it in the same orientation, you will see how far those pins actually come across this knife. So if I open this thing up and then line this up with how far recessed that is, you can see that both of these pins are going straight through the tang of that blade and it's locking up on a flat surface as opposed to a liner lock or frame lock or any other lock that has an angled surface on it. Now when I press that button over, this is obviously gonna move the locking mechanism out of the way, just like this. You can see it pop out there and that allows the blade to close. So this little mechanism right here is what makes this thing so damn strong. How strong though? I'm not sure yet, we're going to definitely test that out in a second. Now real quick, I know you guys like to see side-by-side -side comparisons for size, so let's do this real quick. First up, how about another CRKT offering? This is a design from a good friend of mine, Lucas Burnley, and without looking at the name, you might be able to tell that it is a tuna because it's literally shaped like a tuna. You got some OD green G10 handle scales on there, some orange-ish burnt bronze looking hardware, cool backspacer to match. And yeah, it's a pretty cool design, but up next to this makes it look like a tiny knife. And this thing really isn't all that small. So we'll put that one down here on the small side. Next up, another knife that is sort of a staple. You can compare it to a lot of different things. The Spyderco Paramilitary 2. This is also on the larger side, in my opinion, for knives. Fills up the hand really nicely. And even this looks pretty small next to the Seismic. 
Now moving up, getting a little closer to the size, I have the ZT0804CF. This thing is discontinued, but one of my favorite blades. Right up next to the Seismic, we're getting pretty close to the actual blade, but there is much more handle on the Seismic, so we'll keep that over here on the smaller side. Now the knife that I have that is closest to the side would be this guy right here. You may have seen this in a video in the past, fire's awesome this is the browse blades vendetta this was an american made version there was a limited run this is number 499 of 500 so this is one of the last ones that was in production and this thing is pretty sweet as you can see right next to it it's pretty damn close to the size of the seismic definitely a little funkier of a design and with the locking mechanism on here if I had to guess, I would say that this thing is going to be much more reliable and more robust, but also a cool blade. And then I figured since this thing is so long, I might as well bring out something that is very easy to compare, and that would be a Balasong. So here I have the Benchmade 87, and just to show you how big this knife is, it's getting into the Balasong territory. So there you guys have a quick comparison as far as the size goes. Now let's get into beating this thing up a little bit. Well, the hard use testing already began with what you guys saw in the intro there. That was the first abuse test, and this thing took five good hits with a solid piece of wood, and that thing is in there now. Let's actually get it unstuck if we can. That thing was really in there. So the lockup on here is still completely solid. No wiggle, you can't hear any ticks or anything. So that's a good sign. Now, like I mentioned, I don't really have much experience with this German style steel on here. We could do some slice tests and things like that, but over the past week or so, I have been using this just around the house to break down boxes and do simple EDC tasks. It's been doing everything fine. However, it's just a little bit too big for my liking. I really don't need a knife this big to open a box from Amazon or an envelope. Here is simple piece of looks like treated wood. Let's uh, see what type of edge this thing has on here. Should be pretty good right out of the box. Yeah, no problem at all carving pieces off of there. If you need to do some type of like feather sticking, bushcraft stuff, I mean, that thing is pretty damn sharp. Now what I've read about the steel is that people don't really like it. Everyone seems to be a steel snob nowadays and it's understandable when you're paying around $100 for a knife, you want to have some good quality steel. So we'll see how this thing holds up throughout the day, but so far it's been doing all right. Now let's slam this thing in here once again and uh, give it a couple more hits. I mean, typically I would never do that with a folding knife, but this thing should be able to handle it. It is really in there you know what while it's in there let's just go right into some more extreme testing and bang on the spine of this thing a little bit get it unstuck this is really not good to do to a knife i don't recommend it but we got to test this thing out right lock up is still Pretty damn solid. Still centered too. Now when I think of realistic hard use of a knife, obviously slamming it into a stationary log and just beating on the spine is not going to be real world testing. However, batoning a knife through a log is definitely something that I've done in the past with folding knives. If I know I'm going camping and I know I might have to do something like this, I'm not gonna bring a folding knife. Sometimes that's really all that you have with you though. In most cases, I would have a solid folding knife. However, this thing should be able to get the job done because it is a relatively large blade. Now the handle's so long on here that you could actually hold it and sort of chop a little bit. Obviously not what this thing is designed for, but you could do it for sure, at least to get it started. I'll grab a log like this. So there we go, pretty long log to split like that. Some pretty good dry wood as well. 
and this thing made it through just fine. Still no blade play, which is pretty surprising. One thing that I'm noticing while doing this too is that the tip of the blade down here is a little bit thicker than it is in the middle, which is a nice touch for something like batoning. Let's see if we can get another piece here. This is a really hard piece right here. So that was actually at a point where I didn't feel comfortable doing that. I felt like I was gonna break this knife because it was so hard, but still hanging in there. Let's try for another piece. I mean, that is more than abuse right there. This thing is basically stuck. Still holding up strong. Still centered too. As far as the edge goes, still no issues there. All right, one more thing I wanna do. Again, this is not something I would typically do with a knife, definitely a folding knife for that matter. I wanna see if this will go entirely through a log here. I believe this is some type of oak. I'm just gonna slam it in. Oh man, that is really hard. Let's see if I can hit it through. For reference of how hard I'm hitting, this is all from the pommel of the knife. We're not through yet. That's about as close as I'm gonna get without having this thing in a vise. Oh my gosh. All right, now we're starting to get a little bit of play, but that is some extreme abuse. Actually, now that I'm playing with it, I don't even think it's blade play. I think it's just the pivot spinning loose. Yeah, that's actually all that was. All right, one more. I swear, just one more this time. I'm gonna see if I can drive it all the way into this log. Get some of the bark out of the way. This is much more stable and it's easier to slam on. All right, <laughs> I don't think that's going in any further. The lock still works. Let's see if I can get it out of here now. I might need to really abuse this one to get it out. All right. We lost a little bit of centering there, but that's obviously because I was kind of wiggling it side to side, which you should try not to do. But other than that, still pretty smooth. So there you guys have some straight up knife abuse on this CRKT Seismic. During that testing, I did notice that the pivot did come loose there just for a second. The lockup right now is still really solid. There might be a tiny bit of play, but I think the reason for that is that this pivot is actually loose. The screw right here, like I mentioned, is what you use to adjust the detent on here. And I found that I could actually spin this with just my fingers right now. I'm gonna try to tighten it up as best as I can. I'll have to actually get a torque bit to tighten that down to my liking. I'll probably throw some type of Loctite on there too. But just tightening that up with my thumb, that eliminated all of the play again. There's no ticks. You can't hear any movement out of this thing and it is just super solid, both front and back and left and right. So now going back to the beginning, who is this knife actually for? For me, it's not really an EDC blade. It just takes up a little bit too much real estate in the pocket. It does have a nice pocket clip though. It's nice, low profile, minimal, out of the way. Not a whole lot of the knife actually sticks out. 
But to me, something like this is just a little bit overkill. If you're someone who wants a utility knife and you really beat on things, I think a locking mechanism like the deadbolt is going to last you a really long time. I guarantee you that if I did any of this testing with a frame lock or a liner lock for sure, thing would have busted almost immediately. I absolutely would not recommend hammering a knife into a log like you saw. But speaking of that, the pummel on the end, it's really just this aluminum backspacer with two little lanyard holes, but surprisingly, it's just a little bit dirty. It really didn't take that much wear to it. So while this knife really isn't for me, maybe it is for some people out there who want a knife that folds and can be really beat on, take a lot of abuse. If I bring this knife out for some further testing, I will update you guys and let you know a little bit more about this blade steel for me and for using it like you saw here today. Seems to be fine, holds an edge pretty well. Not quite hair popping sharp. Actually, yeah it is. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I actually just shaved some hair off of my hand. That's actually pretty surprising because I did not touch up this edge at all. This is just coming straight from CRKT, so that seems to be good enough for me. Let me know what you guys think about this knife and this type of testing. If you want to see some more stuff like this in the future, if there's another really robust lock out there, maybe like one of the triad locks on a cold steel knife, I could definitely put one of those to the test as well. If you want to find out more information about the Seismic, I will leave some links in the description down below. And other than that, I think that's going to wrap up today's video. I'm sort of liking this Friday knife theme that we have going on here, and maybe that will continue going forward. So if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every single week. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.